Hello YouTube and the Tribe of the Horror Realm. Uh, this is a response video to... You know what? I, I'm, I'm not even sure who started it. But this is our, actually just a ball rolling from um, someone picking their Friday the 13th film series from worst to first and people giving their order of preference. And uh, they w went on to doing the, uh, which I did with the Halloween film fran uh, series. I don't like to use the word franchise, it's misused. Um, and now, I believe Horror Man came up with the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, series. Your uh, favorites from least to favorite. And um, Teresa, of course, everyone that watches us knows that it's her favorite uh, film series, and Freddy Krueger is her favorite. Um, modern horror icon. So um, she's going to give her list, and I actually wrote down what I think her order is going to be. So kind of like newlywed game, except mm -hmm. there's no whoopee involved. And I'm going to show what I think she picks, and um, see how well we go. We do from there. Um, you know, I think it's going to be the middle that really gets a little convoluted, but we'll see. So, without further ado, that would be her worst nightmare movie. And why don't you go ahead? Everybody who knows me <laughs> knows that my, uh, I think that um, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, like I say, I mean, I'm not saying the guy who plays Freddy does a bad job or the acting is bad, it's just that to me, Robin England is Freddy. I grew up with Robin England through a whole entire series, and he did, you know, Freddy in all of them. So, once you change it, it's like you have to get used to another one, and it's like, he just wasn't Robin England to me. The voice wasn't the same, you know. And I don't like the way it was made, because they kind of took, like, all the nightmares, and try to fit it like all into one film and it just seemed like the plot didn't flow. Her second least favorite, uh, my guess? Ah, uh, Freddy's Dead. Um, it, it wasn't all that bad of a movie. Um, it's just kind of weird that, um, Freddy, you find out that Freddy had a kid. Uh, and it was a girl, uh, it was Maggie, and it just seemed kind of weird that he wanted to kill his own child, <laughs> you know, um, you would think that he'd have some kind of feelings for her, um, but, um, it wasn't all that bad of a movie, but it wasn't one of my very favorites. The next, where, next one is Nightmare for the Dream Master. Uh, this is when uh, Alice gets to um, acquire all the powers um, of dreams. Uh, Kristen has drawn to her, her the first power, and then she acquires all the powers of the other kids that die. And she uses all these powers to uh, uh, beat Freddy, and at the end, she does, but we all know that he comes back. <laughs> so, but, um, that's basically what it's all about. Fourth least favorite? Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. Um, this is a good little flick, uh, for, you know, the second movie of the franchise. Um, Jesse is actually, um, Freddy actually takes over Jesse's body and has him do all the killing for him. But there is one scene in the movie that Freddy is brought into the real world, which is at a pool party, and he's killing all these people. Um, actually, Jesse's girlfriend tries to help him, but um, it doesn't always work out well. But um, basically, that's what we It's not that bad, of course, but it's not that bad. And 
the next one. Next one is uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream Child. Um, I kind of like this because it's a little background story on Freddy. Uh, we found out how he came into the world, um, you know, and uh, how it came about to be. His mother was raped in an asylum by so many men, and uh, <laughs> there came Freddy, and you know, and, uh, and then we find out that Alice is pregnant, and Freddy uses her child to um, bring people into the dream world, and um, you know, and then at the end, um, they free Amanda's soul, which is Freddy's mother, and she brings him back to where she goes. And uh, we're getting closer to the top, so number, of, I don't know, fourth favorite, I guess. The one that started it all, that you're on the street. Um, for every you know the scene, my favorite kill is in this movie. When Tina gets slaughtered by Freddy in the beginning. Um, it was very nicely done. I, I think it was very nice. But uh, this is a good starter um, out to the uh, the series. I, I thought it was very well made. Um, you know, and it gives um, you know, and it introduces Freddy to us. It was a good flick, but not my favorite. Right. Third favorite. Wes Craven's New Nightmare. This was a great book. Um, to bring reality into a movie. Uh, Freddy actually realizes that since he did kill Nancy in the third film, he realizes that Heather is the threat to him because she's still alive. So Freddy is haunting her nightmares and fighting her off, so there'd be no threat to his world. And favorite film. You all know this. I've mentioned it plenty of times. <laughs> Nightmare and Nightmare Elm <laughs> on Elm Street Part Three, The Dream Warriors. This is an amazing flick. Especially with all the kids in it. You know, all the kids uh, on Elm Street. They bring back leather uh Heather Lane Camp you know, to bring it all together, and, you know, they're trying to help each other stay awake, and they also find out the background story on their parents of how they brought Freddy down into the, uh, the boiler room to burn him alive, and, you know, because of what he used to do, and, you know, we get a lot of background information and what's happening, and, um, the kids who play, uh, I mean, the actors that play the kids, did an excellent job, and I like just all the things they put in there, showing how each one of the kids, you know, actually um, gets killed by Freddy. It was pretty classic, so um, that's my favorite. All right, well, um, so that's your list. Um, Now, do you want to know what I picked for you? Yeah. All right.
worst film I said was Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake. And then I picked Freddy's Dead. Um, next one was number five, The Dream Child. So I got that one wrong. Then Freddy's Revenge. Then Dream Master. So those were flipped. So, you know, I'm like, all right, I can deal with the two out of all of them being wrong. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you know how the NCAA basketball, the college basketball has a tournament and people fill in the bracket? This is where my bracket just went to shit and I'm done. <laughs> because um, I picked for your favorite film the original Nightmare on Elm Street as number one. You should know that it's the dream, don't you? I thought that was the number two after the where it all started. Because if that if it wasn't for that, my next order after that, my order was New Nightmare, Freddy vs. Jason, and Dream Warriors. Mm -hmm. So if I have the rest of the order right, it's just that because I put Nightmare first, all the others suddenly fell out of order, so I basically only got three of them correct. <laughs> Who are you? I don't know you. <laughs> you just thought wrong. Uh, indeed. Mm. Alright, real quick, just to finish it off, I'll give you my two cents. Let me do this, shuffle this real quick. Um, I'm actually, I mean, she, anyone know that I'm, it's all right. I mean, I, I'm not the biggest Nightmare on Elm Street fan, but, um. Did you ever watch the whole documentary? Oh, I love the documentary. <laughs> it's interesting, but I watched a documentary about people with mullets. <laughs> so I, I watch a documentary on almost anything. Um, worst Freddy film is Freddy's Dead. Um, I know, uh, Rachel Tatelay worked as a, uh, AD and associate executive producer, all these little jobs with the whole franchise. They gave her a chance to direct, and she screwed it up. Um, next worst one. Um, it may change as I, over time when I watch them, but the remake um, just wasn't feeling it, and um, now. Nah. And it's not so much the actor that's betraying him, because you can't expect Robin Englund to keep playing the role forever. It's just that, you know, they're just, I don't know, it's taking a cheap way out by redoing the film and, um, you know, basically taking parts of all the films and putting it to, like, a best of. It's just not there. Um, the next one that I would rank um, down there... Uh, I'm going to have to say that it would probably be, and this is really, really tight, but, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, the Dream Child. It's not bad. Um, it's just uh, I just probably was at that point seemed very overdone to me. So um, I wasn't really feeling it too much. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, uh, it's just that it was kind of um, going outside the lines, kind of, with bringing him able to possess and come into the real world. Um, it, it was, it's just at this point, it's still like a piece of clay that they were molding, so it was still raw and just not quite done. Freddy vs. Jason. I'm, and this one, again, 
kind of, I mean, that, it, I could almost interchange those two as well. Um, I never liked the look of the Jason in this movie. Um, really thought they should have went with Hodder. I know why they wanted the taller guy and all that, but he didn't quite look like Jason. He didn't quite feel like Jason. And um, just seemed a little too uh, CGI heavy for my tastes. Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. Um, I know I talked with Joe, and he just, he's just kind of ambivalent about this. There's a bit of apathy towards it. It's not that he hates it. He's just not feeling, he doesn't really care about the film that much. It doesn't emote any type of emotion. And with a lot of things, you know, it, that's the worst thing when you get nothing out of the film whatsoever. But, um, you know, the, the, the effects were pretty good, and... Um, you know, I just, it's, it had, um, Tuesday Night, who I kind of dig. She was pretty good as Kristen, um, take, you know, taking over for, uh, Patricia Arquette, and it introduced the Alice character, so, I give it a little more than, um, the other films. Um... This one's really, really close, and it's probably starting to sway the other way. Um, I mean, it's this is the hardest pick for me because mm, mm, mm. it's such a classic. But you know what? I'm going to go Nightmare on Elm Street three, The Dream Warriors, and really really liked the film a lot. Um, it has her favorite line. Welcome to prime time, bitch. Um, <laughs> you know, and it, it, it was a really enjoyable film and you had Dawkin in there, so, you know, I mean, I, hey, I just said I watched a documentary on mullets and these guys had them. <laughs> then, New Nightmare, is number two now, just overtaking part three, mainly because it's daring, it's different, it leaves the comfort zone of what the Elm Street franchise was. Wes Craven created it, and then when everyone else was doing it, he reinvented it. And I think that that took a lot of guts, and it's a kind of a really meta film in itself. So, really an excellent film. And number one is the original Nightmare on Elm Street, mainly because Freddy was scary in this movie. <laughs> he wasn't cracking jokes. He wasn't a wise guy. He wasn't doing little shticks that he developed afterwards. This was a really creepy menace. When you saw him, his silhouette, in that um, alleyway, terrorizing Tina with those long, frigging Yao Ming-like arms, you're like terrified. It's just creepy. So um, I really enjoyed the original one, and I'm not the biggest fan, but because it was a legit scary movie. After that, he really kind of lost a lot of his, the scariness towards him. But with New Nightmare, you know, he was revamped to being a little more of a menace. So um, that was that would be my pick. So, but I'm a insignificant ant of a fan in the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, fandom world. Some of you other guys like it a lot better than I do. Um, but so it was very interesting to hear your choices and how it just. Ruined my bracket. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In 18, 19 years, I still can't get it right, huh? All right, well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.